Currently it's called Sankofa, the differences between. Mm -hmm. I think I'll stick with that. I think that's a good one. Yeah. That's perfect. And what is, what is Sankofa? Uh, Sankofa is um, a West African and Dinkra symbol. Huh. That means learning from the past initiative. Um, the photograph I actually found uh, probably 10, 12 years ago um, in a house that was about to be demolished in the um, central eastern part of San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And it had been a once vibrant housing development, but um, in the sake of urban renewal, uh, the families had been relocated and so many of the houses had been left to either be demolished or relocated to another location. Um, and, and looking at the photograph, um, you know, I question the history of this young lady, what her past might have been, if she's still alive. I have no idea. Um, I love collecting vintage photographs and retelling their story, perhaps, my way, or giving them a story, you know, that might be closely related to who they were and what they did, but more than likely not. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I used the multiple images was to um, allude to parallel universe. In other words, the past, the present, and the future happening simultaneously. The color blue, um, I got it as close to indigo as I could. Uh, to represent the Middle Passage, which is, um, you know, the history of how this young girls and my ancestors arrived to uh, this country. Um, the symbols, I used a total of 16, representing the Siri Project, the 16th year of the Siri Project, um, as well as um, incorporating um, African beliefs of using images, using your art to, um, I want to make sure I'm getting it right, <laughs> to create works that encourage self-examination, self-empowerment, and self-healing. Mm -hmm. uh, the tree symbolizes life, death, rebirth, family. Uh, the crescent moon, um, again, symbolizes uh, the universe as well as uh, rebirth. Uh, and the mathematical equation, I started doing research on the internet to look up um, the number 16, the significance, if there was any of the number 16. And I came across this mathematical equation and liked it. And in my transcribing it, I kept getting it wrong. So I chose to leave my mistakes in the piece as well to show that, you know, uh, we do make mistakes as humans. Um, and will you, uh, you had told me the story of what was below this photograph, of the original? Mm -hmm. uh, the original had an inscription on the bottom because apparently it came from some photo album of sorts and it said, Aunt, Aunt Lilia's niece, San Marcos, Texas. However, there was no date, so I'm just judging by the clothing, the style of clothing, um, the tone that was used in the photograph, the way, the process, that it was probably in the 20s or 30s. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and the doll is significant. Too. Yeah, the doll, to me, was quite significant, especially for that time period to see um, an African-American doll or a black doll mm -hmm. and, you know, being, having, um, being used by this this child. Generally, it's a doll of another complexion. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what else am I missing here? Um, have um, uh, explicit meanings. Mm -hmm. um, this one is uh, a symbol for tree, I remember that, um, which again refers back to the tree here mm -hmm. and to the ghost tree here that you can barely see. Oh, wow. Yeah, I hadn't noticed that okay. one. Okay. And this is the concentric circle, which, you know, is, is about life, um, regeneration, you know, the fact that we do go in circles. Um, 
red uh, represents lifeblood. I don't think I mentioned that. And what I, oh, another thing that I did when um, I found the photograph, um, over time, uh, parts of the image had been um, disintegrated or washed away or rubbed away or just, you know, was fading. And right now I've made so many copies that I, I keep the original um, in archival sensitive um, storage mm -hmm. because it is deteriorating. And right here you see her eyes missing. It wasn't, it's not in, in the photograph at all. So I photoshopped her an eye to make her um, more complete and part of the present. Um, let's see, what else have I done here? A lot of stuff that I do, consciously I will design mm -hmm. and um, make a mock-up, a drawing of what I want. But when I get into the studio, when I start creating, the subconscious come through. And oftentimes, I don't know what I've totally done until I finish the product. And I look back and I'm like, wow, whoa, what was I thinking? What did I, how did that happen? Yeah. So, um, it's, to me, it's, it's the spirits of, of her that kind of guide me on what she want to be and how she wants to be presented. I am a mixed media artist because I tend to get bored with one media. As well, um, a particular media might not speak to what I want to pre present or produce. Or, um, it might not say what I'm trying to say. So I use very diverse and mixed media. I love, again, working with found objects. Um, uh, there's a big sense of spirituality in the found object. I'm interested in mysticism as well, and um, whether I whether I plan to or not, they're usually present in my work. Mm -hmm. Whether it's um, commissioned work, whether it's uh, public art work, or um, work like you know I'm just finished here in the Syria project. Uh, right now, I'm really drawn to photographs, um, and I've recently started using old photographs of my family, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought were too private to really get out there, but um, it's okay. I don't mind doing it now. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with it now. Um, and also in the public art realm, um, I'm more attuned to and interested in uh, historical aspects incorporated into the public art. For instance, some of the benches that you saw talk about the history of different communities where the benches are you know, being commissioned for, fabricated for. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also learned how to incorporate collage into the benches using old photographs or objects I found in the area where the bench is going to be placed and using rosin to contain those objects, those images, those photographs. Mm -hmm. um, I try to collect um, data that is relevant to that area, mm -hmm. uh, photographs, um, uh, icons, you know, things that are relevant. Native Texan, grew up in, was born in San Antonio, Texas, but grew up in a small town of about um, 20,000 people called Cuero, Texas. Um, I've always drawn or been a creative person. I've always wanted to take things apart and examine them. Um, family members um, used to tease my my parents and say, you know, you coming by to visit? Well, yeah, you're bringing your daughter Bernice? Well, yeah, okay, we need to hide our clocks and radios. Because invariably I would, you know, take them apart and of course could not put them back together again. <laughs> That's awesome. And this is like preschool. Um, uh, at the same time, I would use mud, because um, the area is known for caliche soil, which is very easy to work with. It's a clay and uh, we create little people. And since I'm an only child, I had an extremely um, outrageous imagination. Yeah. So I would recreate my little people, my little sisters, my little brothers, my little friends, um, and make um, stages out of cardboard boxes and have performances and invite my friends over to watch my performances with the dolls. 
or the figures that I would create um, and ad lib as I'd go along because I really wasn't that much into writing script, I would just kind of ad lib. Um, then I started creating my own cartoons uh, because the comic strips were, uh, they were okay, but I thought I could do better. Mm -hmm. So I created my own um, uh, comic strips. Um, my drawing instrument was um, charcoal from an old wash pot that my mother used to boil uh, and make homemade soap, lye soap. And so the coal that was left underneath from the burnt sticks, those were my pencils, those were my charcoal pencils. Um, that's kind of how I started. Um, in high school, they didn't teach art in elementary and middle school where I grew up. In high school, I heard horror stories about the art teacher, so I didn't take her. Yeah. However, I had a French teacher that uh, would see my doodles in class, because I always made doodles and stuff. Those were my notes, actually. Yeah. And, and took an interest in me and would bring me, would take me to San Antonio because she was an opera lover. And I loved all kind of music. Um, and that's how I was introduced to museums, uh, to the opera, to the fine arts. Mm -hmm. um, however, going to museums in San Antonio were, you know, it was interesting, it was wonderful. But I didn't see images that looked like me or that represented African American art and artists. I had no idea that they even existed, really. Um, um, it was, you know, like later when I was able to travel um, outside of um, San Antonio that I um, was able to get my hands on books because even the library didn't have that uh, information. Uh, that I was introduced to other artists, like artists in the Harlem Renaissance, and that um, there were people like me making art. Um, when I graduated from high school, or prior to graduating from high school, my, I always said I wanted to be a doctor, but my knowledge of a doctor was a medical doctor, not PhD or English or anything like that. And I wanted to, to major in art, but my parents talked me out of it. You know, you'll never make any money doing that kind of thing. Uh, you need to get into a career where, you know, there's prestige, you can make money, there's no prestige in being an artist. And I believed it for a long time. And finally, um, in my early 30s, I went back to school and uh, pursued getting a degree in art. And so here I am. Yeah. And where did you go to school? Uh, my bachelor's is from uh, Incarnate Word College, it's now University, and my master's is from Trinity University, both in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. um, I took classes prior to then at um, Columbia University when I lived in New York, and from um, an exchange um, school in um, on the Isle of Crete, because I lived in Greece for um, three and a half years. So I took archaeology and some art classes there. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be perfectly honest, we started off um, myself and the printer on a kind of a little, little miscommunication kind of thing. And with me never having done um, um, serographs or screen printing, I had no idea what the process was. Even reading books, you know, mm -hmm. it still couldn't really help me. Um, I knew. Um, what kind of image I wanted to, to, to uh, create, whether or not it could happen, we should we would see, you know, uh, because it is multi-layered um, and created through scanning and on the computer and using found materials as well. Um, it was challenging in coming up with the colors mm -hmm. that I wanted to use. I didn't want it to be uh, your traditional uh, serograph that's kind of like poster looking mm -hmm. or yeah, advertising very and very graphic, uh, very extremely colorful and I love color. But because of, because of the image I was working with, because of the original colors that were found in, in the image I was working with, I wanted to stay as true to form as I possibly could. Mm -hmm. At the same time, tell a story. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot and I appreciate the opportunity to have had this experience. 
I think I might be hooked. <laughs> this might be another medium that I'll start um, uh, trying to further develop and work on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, I mean, this image is just so spectacular. Oh, I absolutely love it. Thank you. Yeah. And usually, I mean, I do a lot of assemblage and collage. Mm -hmm. And again, like I said, when I'm, when I'm fabricating it, I'm in the zone. Mm -hmm. And so subconsciously, and um, I'm using um, images or tools or colors um, that speak to me, where the piece is speaking to me and saying, I want this and I want that. And I want it placed here or there or whatever. And once I see the final product, you know, I'm like, wow. You know, okay, it, it, it came together. Um, and that's what happened. Sankofa. Mm -hmm. I think that even though I can make a statement about my intent, um, about um, what my idea is, or um, 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 explain my artwork, um, I create it so that people that look at it can come to their own conclusions. Um, can get what they get out of it. It might not even match what my intention is, but the fact that they looked at it um, and it it um, created a question mm -hmm. or an inquiry, you know, then my mission has been fulfilled.